This Gibbs formula, delta G is delta H minus T delta S, has some parts that you've already seen before. For example, delta H. You already have calculated the delta H by using the values from the appendix. This is products minus reactants, and you always have to multiply the values from the appendix by their coefficients. You can calculate delta S exactly the same way. Use the appendix values products minus reactants. If you know delta H and you know delta S, then you just have to plug in the temperature and you can calculate delta G. So that's one method of finding delta G for a reaction. Remember the superscript zero just means under standard conditions. So standard temperature, standard pressure if you're talking about a gas, or standard concentration if you're talking about a solution. Instead of, it, instead of calculating delta G that way, you have another way to do it, which is to do it in one step. If you have the full appendix, you can calculate delta G using delta G of the products times the coefficients times or minus the Gibbs energy of the reactants times their coefficients. So here's one that I calculated using standard values. You have a balanced reaction given to you. You have to be careful to choose the right phase. For example, here's sulfur solid. There's forms of solids. This one is called the rhombic form. So when you look up in the appendix, you'll find that that has a value of zero for the Gibbs energy of formation. I have the value for H2O steam. Steam would be a different value than liquid water or solid water, so you have to be careful to choose the right value for whatever phase your reaction has. This calculation gives me a negative delta G, so under standard conditions, this reaction is spontaneous. If we're at the standard conditions of temperature and pressure. We can also calculate delta G if we change from standard to non-standard using this equation, which has the reaction quotient Q, just like we saw when it did equilibrium. Q has exactly the same form as K. The only difference is you use the initial values instead of the equilibrium values. So for the reaction that I just calculated the standard delta G, we could calculate delta G under non-standard conditions given these pressures and at 298 Kelvin. So I calculate Q just like I would calculate a K products divided by reactants raised to their coefficients and when I make those substitutions I get this value for Q. I can plug that value into the equation I knew the standard delta G from the appendix calculation. The gas constant R has to be converted because my delta G was in kilojoules and the gas constant R is in joules. So when I do this calculation, I get delta G is negative 118. So this is under non-standard conditions. This reaction is also spontaneous under these values. Delta G standard is also related to the equilibrium constant by this formula. Delta G standard is minus the gas constant again times the temperature times the natural log of the thermodynamic equilibrium constant. So last time we found delta G standard, we can calculate K. So if I make these substitutions, Notice the negative sign on delta G cancels the negative sign on R, so when delta G standard is negative, I'm going to end up getting a positive value for the natural log of K. If I want K by itself, I have to get rid of the natural log, so I use E as the base. And so K, the equilibrium constant, is E to the positive 36, which is going to be a very large number. 6 times 10 to the 15th.
these things go together the way the math works. So when delta G standard is a negative number, K is going to be a very large K. If delta G standard is positive, meaning under standard conditions the reaction is not spontaneous, then K will be much less than 1. Remember, a large value of K favors the products, and a very small value of K favors the reactants.